Hello Periscope, how are you guys today? I am doing quite well. Let me step away just for a second while I grab my, um, my iPad, my tablet here. And what I'm going to do is open up Periscope. Hi, Jay Periscope. Thank you for joining. I'm going to open up Periscope on my tablet so that I can read comments. Hi, the mom ledger. Thank you for joining. We are going to make some uh, tres leche soap. Hi, how are you? I am so glad that you guys have joined us today. And because I'm also going to load this video up to YouTube, hello YouTube followers. Thank you for watching um, this video today. We are going to make some tres leche soap. So normally I would um, give out my recipe, but I'm not going to give out the recipe this time. What I am going to do though is come back on maybe later today if I can um, or tomorrow and do a video on how to formulate um, a nice firm moisturizing bar of soap. That way um, I still feel like um, I'm giving you something that you can walk away with, that I am empowering you to be able to do this yourself, but I'm not giving you everything that I have, um, that, that I took time to make and develop and kind of design specifically the way that I want it, okay? So um, I have measured out some of my oils. Let me bring this camera down. And um, there we go, there we go. So I'm going to continue measuring out my oils. And I will tell you what I put in here because it goes right on the ingredients list. There is um, canola oil, castor oil, coconut oil, mango seed butter, olive oil, tallow, and then again, this is tres leche soap. So the three milks are goat's milk, coconut milk, buttermilk. And then um, I have some goodies that I put in, sodium lactate, maple syrup, which I forgot to pull out, kale and clay. And then the fragrance, I'm sorry that y'all are all in my refrigerator, but I've forgotten my maple syrup. Um, the fragrance is a fragrance that I am testing for the Chandler's Rose. It is a fragrance called Spice Factory. So we are going to go ahead and finish measuring out our soft oils. I've put my hard oils in here already. And I have to be careful with this bottle because it is split. So... Um, my oil tends to leak. And I apologize if, um, if you are making comments and I don't see them um, because I'm concentrating on my weights here. Uh. Hi, Didi Mocha, how are you? And then my last oil. I 
I hope I brought enough out here. Yeah, I did. Okay. So, oh man, I forgot my stick blender. I will be right back, you guys. I'm so sorry. I'll be right back. I was pulling out ingredients I kept saying don't forget your stick blender don't forget your stick blender and then I forgot it okay so we have our oils in and I am going to hi it's a kid thank you for joining I am going to add now some people add their fragrance um, at trace some people add aftertrace. I usually add my fragrances to the oils. I um, have yet to work with a difficult fragrance. And by that, I mean when I am going to choose my fragrance, I'll look on the site where I got it from. Hi, the mom ledger. I'll look on the site that I got the fragrance from. And if it says that it accelerates trace, then I won't use it. So, um, I have not yet worked with a difficult fragrance, number one. Number two, I am testing these fragrances for Naomi at the Chandler's Rose. So if this is my normal process that I add the oils to, um, I add the fragrance to the oils, then I want to continue that process in the test because a part of this is testing whether or not the fragrance discolors or whether or not it accelerates trace. Now, again, like the title said, this is a, um, a tres leche soap. So we are using milk, which does accelerate trace. So please bear with me through that. That doesn't interact with the light solution. I've never had a, a problem with my fragrance. I've never had a, a problem with the fragrance um, being um, soft or... Um, accelerating I've never had a problem with um, putting my fragrance in with the oils the only thing it does is it helps me not to forget the fragrance if I don't put it in with the oils I'm afraid I'll forget it um, so that's the way I've always done it and um, and for me that works so we're gonna go ahead and put the fragrance in I'm just gonna show you it's just a tester I have forgotten several times. Yeah, that's why I always, that's why I added to the oils. And again, this isn't an official um, bottle of fragrance. If you ordered from the Chandler's Rose, you would not get something that looks like this. Your label would be far more um, official because she does have an official, you know, official business. But I'm a tester for her. So we're going to go in with our fragrance. And this one is called um, the Spice Factory. And it just smells awesome. Oh, it smells so good. It's, a, it's warm. It, it's a little spicy, like a little cinnamony. But it's also um, sweet. It does. It's also um, kind of sweet, but not overbearingly sweet like you find with um, a lot of apple pie spice fragrances. Um, not overbearingly sweet like that. But it's just really, really nice. So I thought it would be great for, um, for a soap like this. Okay, so where am I at? Let's get our sodium lactate in there. Let me move that. Let's get our sodium lactate in and when I soap I do everything just about everything by weight so while most people will say I put in a teaspoon or a tablespoon of sodium lactate I do it by weight and the weight is all dependent on um, the hardness level of the soap that I have already so if my formula calls for a really hard bar, then I use less sodium lactate. 
if it calls for a softer bar, then I use more sodium lactate. So it really just depends on, um, on your formula and how you do things. Now, one thing I don't do by weight is my clay and my oatmeal. Man, I thought I was better prepared than this. Alright, good thing I do this all in the kitchen, so everything is right here with me that I need to grab Let's get us what we need here. And I use oats and a lot of mine. Um, let me apologize right now. I, um, I am a, su a supporter of Black Biscope. I love Black Biscope. And I am fully aware that Black, Black Biscope is going on right now. However, um, I am in Hawaii. Let me check my recipe. I am in Hawaii. So... The timing some days is it's just not something that I can accommodate when it comes to what time I need to scope. Um, their timing is perfect in that it comes on in the evening, which is perfect for people that live on the East Coast. But I'm six hours behind. So it is 124 in the afternoon for me. So I can't, a lot of times, if I have something that I need to do in the afternoon, I can't always say, oh, I'm going to move it um, after Black Biscope because by then, a lot of times that's too late for me. I, I have to go pick up my daughter from school and things like that. So um, for anyone catching the replay that normally follows me, I want to tell you right now that I apologize for scoping during Black Biscope. But um, you'll see when I pour in, yes, so I'm using a milk and a sugar. That should be interesting. Um, you'll see when I pour in the milk that it was starting to get thick and I really just couldn't wait any longer. I just couldn't wait any longer. I try to be pretty meticulous with my notes. And this wasn't as much syrup as I wanted, which is okay. It's an additive. It's not a necessary part. Hey, hi, Cammy. how are you? That's what I call my daughter. Her name is, her first name is Camilla. Her middle name is Noel, but we call her Cammy. Cammy Cam. That's what we call her. So I need to write down how much uh, syrup I used. Okay. Now let's get this mixed up. Let's get this mixed on up. Let's cut that off. And there's no lie in there yet. That's why you don't see me wearing gloves or um, my eye protection. But trust me, I will in just a minute. This is going to be kind of live, you guys. I was kind of confused. <laughs> no, uh -uh. Um, I respect the lie there would be no way there would be no way you would see me on here um making soap and dealing with the lie without my gloves and my eye protection i just wanted to get that um the oats that i put in there and the syrup that i put in there What's her name, your daughter? Her name is Camilla Noel. And um, we got Noel. The reason that I named the company Noel was 
not necessarily because of my daughter's name. It was the way we came up with her name. My husband, oh, that's very interesting. When, um, when my husband was deployed and I was pregnant with her, he had sent me an email and asked, um, asked me to look up a particular website and the website combines names and creates a new name. It just takes random letters from two names and creates another name. My husband's first name is Mackinson and my first name is Shelly. So it just took letters from his name and a few letters from my name and one of the names it generated was Noel. So when I that's so that's what we named her. We liked the name Noel and that's what we named her. So when it was time for me to decide what to call the company, I wanted it to be family. I wanted it, um, thank you. I wanted the name to represent our family. And I felt like Noel represented all three of us. It represented my daughter, because that's her middle name, but it also represented me and my husband because of the way we came up with the name to begin with. Okay, so I'm gonna double check my paperwork here. I have all of my oils in. I have all of my additives and what, okay, so let me tell you the plan because in soap making things don't always go according to plan, but we're going to try. So what I'm going to do, I have mixed up a little mica, which is colorant, a little mica and oil. This is the gold and it's only going to go on top. I'm going to leave the soap uncolored. So gold, Mixed up a little cappuccino. Hi, Ines. My dad's publishing name is Dika, and that's from all our names. Oh, very nice. Hi, Ines. I am so glad that you joined me today. And this one is copper. All three of these micas are from um, Brambleberry. So that's the cappuccino. It gives a beautiful brown. Thank you. This is the copper. They have two coppers. One is lip, lip safe and one isn't. And this is 14. Oh no, this is from Bisented. The 14 karat gold mica from Bisented. And then we have a little glitter, which is also from Brambleberry that I'm going to put um, on top of the soap. Okay, you guys, it is show time. So I got my goggles on. Let me show you. Yes, I look pretty silly, but this is how we do when we make soap. Got my goggles on. Let me get gloved up. And another thing about, you'll see what I was saying about why I could not wait for Black Bed Scope to end. Even though I really did not want to scope during Black Bed Scope. So my milk was starting to saponify. You see how thick that has gotten? So I really just couldn't, I couldn't wait any longer. I had to go ahead and start. And because it has started to saponify, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this through a strainer. And that term saponify I'm sorry if I'm missing comments. It is, this soap is um, tres leches soap, which means three milks. It is coconut milk, buttermilk, and goat's milk. So we're gonna run this through the strainer. Now, anytime that you use a liquid other than water, you should run it through a strainer. Anytime, anytime at all whatsoever that you use a liquid other than water, you should run it through a strainer. Because when you use water, water goes clear with the lye so that you're able to know when you have dissolved 
all of your um, lie crystals. But when you use anything else other than water, your liquid does not go clear and you don't have that um, indication that you have fully dissolved all of your um, lye crystals. So it is best anytime you are not using um, water for your lye, it is just absolutely best to go ahead and um, run your liquid through a strainer. Now all of this right here, <laughs> all of this right here that has thickened, this is just fat. That's all it is. It is just the fat that is in the soap. And we want that. We want that good stuff. So I am going to mash that through the strainer. We want that fat. Because it is the fat um, in all of the oils in the milk. It is the fat in here that actually makes soap. I um I was watching a soaper yesterday cuz I watch a lot of soapers on YouTube. That's one of my favorite things to do. Is watch um YouTube soapers. And um, he was making um, a milk soap. And he had his milk and he did not pour it through a strainer. And I thought to myself, oh my goodness. Didi Mocha joined. Thank you for coming back, Didi Mocha. And don't get me wrong, it's not that um, the, so the soap is not good. Um, it's just that when you, um, when you soap with water, you have a visual indicator that all of your lye has been dissolved. And your visual indicator is that you don't see any lye left over. I mean, the liquid goes completely clear and it actually just looks like plain water. It really does. So that's your visual indicator. But when you use anything else, you lose that visual indicator. And for me, um, I, it's not that I feel like um, I did not dissolve all of my lie. In fact, I'm pretty confident that I did. It's that I want to be sure. And the way that you are absolutely sure that you have is to use a strainer. So even though I really want all of this goodness in here, um, I'm going to set that to the side. In fact, I'm gonna put this in the sink now. Okay, so we've got our lye in, our milk, the mold is ready, the oil drops, the mica drops are ready. Let's go. Pardon the noise. You see the turn, how right here, that is starting to look a little different than this oil part. That's because the oil has begun to saponify and mix 
with the um, lie. <laughs> I'm going to scrape my sides and then blend that just a little more. So when I made my lemon soap, I made a soap where I used lemon juice as the um, lye liquid. It gave me a, what we call a false trace. It looked like it was at trace, but it wasn't really at trace and it traced very quickly, quickly enough for me to um, readily know, know right away that this was not a real trace. And the way you identify it is you stir it out like this, just kind of stir it a little bit, and it had thickened up very quickly. And when you stir it out, it'll thin back out. That's how, if you're nervous, um, something comes to a trace a little quickly and you're just kind of thinking man that was a little bit too fast it was just too fast then you just take your spatula and you stir it out and if it's a false trace it'll reveal itself and that's what it did okay Now, what we mean by trace is um, the level at which um, the soap has combined. So you can have a very thin trace, you can have a medium trace, and a very thick trace. And this is about at a nice medium trace. It's not very thick, but um, one thing that they say to be able to identify a trace is to lift your stick blender and it should leave an indentation. You should be able to see the indentation, which I can see. If I could bring you guys closer, I'd bring you closer. But that's all you do. You lift up your stick blender and if you see that indentation there, then you're at trace, okay? And that's, trace is just the point of no return. It is where you have combined your fats and your lye and it has begun the soap making process. Now, do I need to blend this anymore? Absolutely not. I don't need, to, this is ready to go. I can throw it in the mold, which is sitting here ready for me and be done. But I want to design my top. So I want this to get a little bit thicker. And the way that you kind of do that is to stick blend it more. Uh oh. This is called burping the stick blender to get the air bubbles out. <laughs> This fragrance is really behaving beautifully because I've done a whole lot of blending, a lot of stick blending, a lot of stirring, and um, this fragrance is um, not speeding up. And to be quite honest, um, this is my first time soaping, I think it's my first time soaping full milk um, I did not do a water discount, so um, I did use, I used a lot of milk. I used the full 38%, and I used that much because um, I was afraid that this was really going to accelerate, but now I see that um, I really could have brought that content down 
at least to um, at least to 36 because the more water you use the longer it's going to take for that water to dry out so this is ready let me get my sides in good stir down my sides I'm almost tempted to go get me some cups and pour some color in here I'm tempted y'all what do you think It's behaving so well. Yeah, let me let me let me do something here. Let's just try. You know, let's do something. I didn't expect it to behave this nice. I'm sorry about the arm reach. What did I use? I used um so I used my three different milks um hold on hold on Inez I used my three different milks which were goat's milk coconut milk I'm gonna take my oh my fragrance oil I'm testing I used one of the testers um from Naomi from the Chandler's Rose Um, olive oil. Make sure this is still, yep, that's still nice and fluid. Add a little bit of olive oil in here to all three of these. Yeah, I didn't um, expect this to behave so well. Like I said yesterday, I um, I thought this was going to pretty much give me soap on a stick. Ah! Okay. Soap on a stick. Um, so I was just kind of like, well, there's no sense in really coloring it. That isn't giving me soap on a stick at all. Okie dokie. Let's move these. Grab some cups. Sorry. Grab us some cups. One, two, three cups. And let's pour some stuff. Oh, y'all, I am a really messy soaper. I need to warn you. I am such a messy, messy soaper. Just so that y'all know that. I am a really messy soaper. So I don't want y'all to see me and just be like, ooh, that girl. I am such a messy soaper. Y'all need to know that right now. Okay, let's see what kind of colors we get. Let's start with this dark brown, get that mixed in there. And like I said before, this is um, 
cappuccino from Brambleberry. And let's get, mm, let's go on and get that mixed in there. So that's not going to give me a lot of color. And let's get that mixed in there, the copper. All right. Stir in our copper. That's pretty. I like that color. Naomi, I want you to know that this um, fragrance is working beautifully. I am not finding that it accelerates at all whatsoever. That gold didn't color very well. I didn't use enough of it. Just a little bit more gold. Not too much more though, because I don't want it to sneak up on me. Sorry about the reach. I'm sorry about the reach, you guys. Okay, so I'm just going to pour a little bit more of this gold in here. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and get this molded. Because it may darken up a little bit. Um as it sits. Okay, let's get us a paper towel. So we'll start and we'll pour in this brown first. Even that out. And then for some contrast, I need to get this stirred up to loosen it just a little. For some contrast, we'll pour this in. Then we'll get this one poured in there. I'm sorry I'm not getting you guys' comments. Looks yummy, thank you. Then from up high, we'll get that poured in. Okay, now what I'm going to do is come through and scrape this bowl. 
scrape it on out. I need to put my camera on the other side of me so that you guys can see a little bit better. Let's get that in there. Now I'm just gonna, uh, yeah, let's put the last of this in. I'm sorry, I know my bowl is blocking the camera. I'm sorry. But we're going to scrape, scrape, scrape. And lucky for us, this fragrance is behaving so well. Usually I'm kind of stressed out by now because um, things are speeding up on me. But this isn't speeding up at all. Let's get some more white down here. Or natural, I should say. Because I didn't add any TD to it. Okay. Now let's get um, this brown. Shelly, you're too cool. Oh, <laughs> that's because this fragrance is behaving so well. But let me tell you, usually I would have freaked out by now. Usually, I would be like, oh my God, I told you I have a default swirl. Oh, thank you, Zakia. Um, that in the pot swirl is um, my default go-to swirl when I panic. Yeah, that, um, and the in the pot swirl is such a pretty swirl that, um, that it doesn't look like a panic swirl. It just looks like, you know, like it was planned. And before I add this last color, I'm going to go grab my hanger tool. So I'm not sure exactly what the inside of this is going to look like. So I'm going to go grab my hanger tool and run that. I meant, I know exactly. I meant for it to do that. I meant for it to come out that way. So I'm going to go grab my hanger tool right quick, run my hanger tool through this. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is grab a different tool. My mother bought me these. If I can get them open with my gloves on. Yes. My mother bought me these a long time ago um, for swirling and I never used them. So I'm just gonna run that through. But not too much. Cause we don't want the colors to get muddy. We just want a nice swirl on the inside. All right. And then we're gonna finish up by adding the last of this gold.
and I do want to design the top, um, but this is not firm enough to do quite what I want to do. I wish my mom was on here. It's Friday. Friday night for her. She hanging out somewhere, I guess. And by hanging out, that for her, that usually means she's at church. My mother, um, her tag on here is Shelly Ebony. Of course, I'm Shelly. Ebony's my sister. And um, our mother is an assistant pastor at her church. So usually if she's hanging out, then she's at her church somewhere. Or doing something churchy or church-ish. Now the last thing that we're going to do, well, before we decorate the top, let's clean this up a little bit. Push that on in there. Shelly, when do you when do you do embeds and cobra? Do you prefer? I've never done embeds. I've never done them. No, my mom's name is Joanne. Her name is Joanne. But no, I have um I've never done embeds, and it's not that. I don't want to. I do want to. It's just that I um, don't have a mold for the particular embeds that I want to do. And I haven't gotten around to making one. I really don't want to make them. Um, oh, so before I get, let's tamp this down. And now we're going to just put some copper dots on top of here. So when I swirl this, um, when I do decorate the top, it'll have some nice rich colors. That's our copper. A little gold. Oh, we're looking good on time. It's the mica, the leftover mica that I um, mixed up. It's just some leftover mica in oil. And um, what you do, I am so sorry. I'm sorry for the reach. What you do is, oh, that's a little too heavy. Don't want to stand up. What you do is you just take a, a little bit of leftover mica in oil. Great tip. There's always, yes, exactly. You know when you, you're always mad because you're like, man, what am I going to do with this mica? And you don't want to waste it. And um, it just adds some really nice depth to your colors when um, when you design your top. All 
I tried that with TD. Yeah. Um, no, not with TD. Yeah. Not with TD. And I'm hoping the design I want, this isn't going to look all crazy. Okay, where's my spoon? I grabbed the spoon, but I don't I still don't think this is firm enough. Yep, it is. The center isn't firm enough, but it'll be okay. And then lastly, I'm going to run the spoon up each side so that my little scoops swirl a little bit. Now this to me looks a little funny. It looks a little messy to me because it's not firm enough. You guys think I should keep messing with it? That's not very firm. No? Okay, I'll leave it alone then. I'll leave it be. Because you know what we do. Like a feather sometimes. Okay, I'll leave it alone. You know how we do. We just mess with stuff and then the next thing you know, Yes, exactly, exactly. So do I. That's why it's so much better having you guys on here. Because that's what I normally do at that point is I keep messing with it. And then I'm like, oh, man, I should have left it alone. Very pretty. Thank you, Inez. Thank you very much. But that's what the mica does. When you use those mica drips, it just gives a depth to the, um, th to the colors. I think I used a little bit too much mica. Um, yeah, I can't wait to see it cut either. I'm excited. This was 100% uh, completely different than what I had set out to do when I first started. So I'm going to add just a little bit of glitter. I like some glitter. Yes, yeah, like shading. It's not too much. Yeah, I like some glitter. Okay, yes, glitter. All right. See, see, see. I'm so glad y'all are here. I do I like glitter and when I first started soaping I was like I am never using glitter I was like glitter is for pansies I am never using glitter now man I have to practice some glitter control cuz I love glitter all right so I think that's enough glitter I am excited, y'all, I'm so excited. Let me spray this with a little bit of alcohol. And um, I usually don't gel my soaps. I put them in the refrigerator. Oh, you know what? I gotta put this in the refrigerator. Because it's milk. Thank you. Because it's a milk soap, I have to put it in the refrigerator. I'm just going to bring this up a little closer. How long in there? Mm, I usually put it in there, keep it in there overnight. So that's what we're looking like.
Thank you. Yep. That's what we're looking like. Thank you. Because that is not, um, <laughs> that's not what it was supposed to be when I started, but I'm so glad that I listened to you guys and add, added those extra colors. I was just gonna make a plain old brown soap. So, that has been the making of Tres Leche Soap. Who just, this homespun life joined. Hi, this homespun life. We just finished making our, our Tres Leche Soap. I am, I'm glad that I did this one. Hi, thank you for joining. Um, I'm very glad that I did this. You know, it's, I believe um, that, yes, I believe that um, there, there's always something that we are all afraid of doing. You're like, oh man, that's going to be too hard for me, or that's just kind of above my level of where I am. But if you don't try it, you'll never know. And this was one of the soaps that, um, that I was just kind of afraid of making um, a little better. All right, I like your tag. Thank you for joining. Um, but as you saw, it was nothing to be afraid of. There were no big explosions. There was no big, huge volcano. Um, excuse me. What I wish I could have done was showed you my lie procedure. Hi, Florence. Thank you for joining. Um, because that is actually the trickiest part, but I, um, poured my three milks. I measured my three milks out last night. I poured them and then I froze them. Um, I would advise maybe letting your milk sit out maybe 10 minutes because when you add your lye, your lye needs to add with some form of a liquid. So if the top layer of your milk is frozen, it's just going to be a little difficult for it to activate. So I would advise just letting it sit out maybe about 10 minutes and then um, adding your milk, adding your lye to that one tablespoon at a time. Thank you for following me, Florence. Um, add it one tablespoon at a time and stir, stir, stir. Now I have a, where's my thermometer? Here it is. I have a laser thermometer. So what I do, like this soap is at 77 degrees. So what I do is I stir constantly and then I'm monitoring my temperature. So as long as things are, as long as your milk is frozen, you're going to start with your milk at maybe about, um, once you add the lye, it'll get up to maybe about 85, 89. And you just keep stirring because the, the cold from the milk that is frozen underneath it is going to keep it cool. Where did I get the Amazon, amazon.com. It's Newbie, that's the brand name. Yeah, and I just got it from Amazon. And you monitor that temperature. So what lye does, when it combines with a liquid, it heats up. And your indication that your lye has dissolved is that the temperature begins to drop. So as you're stirring, you're monitoring your temperature and it's, you're going to see your temperature rise. And then once your temperature, thank you for joining, Apple. Thank you for joining. As your temperature drops back down, back into the 70s, then you can add one more tablespoon. But what you don't want to do is start adding too much lye at a time to your milk. Because then it'll cause your milk, yes, it is frozen. Put it in the freezer. I froze mine overnight and then take it out for maybe about 10 minutes and then start adding your lye to it. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. So one, one tablespoon at a time, you're monitoring that temperature and you don't add another tablespoon in until your temperature has dropped. And by dropped, I mean maybe about 10 degrees. Now your temperature should never get very high to begin with. So if you're noticing that your temperature is like getting into the 90s, then you want to take more time in between when you're adding your tablespoons. You don't need to necessarily add less, 
but take more time between when you're adding your tablespoons of lye. So let's say um, you get to a point where your milk has begun to, um, your milk is all melted, but you still have lye left. Then what you want to do is get a nice sized bowl and put your lye container into that bowl. Very slowly and very carefully add ice cubes into the bowl, not the bowl that the lye is in. I'll show you. because I want to be very clear in my demonstration. Let's say that, oh y'all, I just found some more soap. Look, I found some more soap. Mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna do something with that in a few minutes. So um, let's say that your lye mixture, so your lye and your milk is in here, and then you have a separate container off to the side of your lye. All of your milk has thawed, but you still have lye crystals left. You fill this bowl, you put your cup in here, and then very slowly, you put your ice into here. Once you have your ice in, very slowly, you add water into here so that your cup, your lye mixture, is sitting in an ice water bath. And that will assist in keeping your milk cool and keeping it from scorching. Today, I, um, I actually got all of my lye in and my milk wasn't all dissolved. It stayed so cool that it didn't, it didn't even thaw out all of my milk. So I had to wait for the rest of my milk to thaw and combine with the lye. But that has not always been the case. There have been times when I have added my lye too quickly and it has overheated, turned orange, bright orange on me. Um, and, and then there are some things that, um, like aloe vera juice. Aloe vera juice turns pink. It doesn't matter how slow you add your lye to it, it turns pink. So the trick is, you know, the first time that you do it, just make sure that you're adding your lye slowly, one tablespoon at a time. You're monitoring that temperature and that once the temperature comes down, like about 10 degrees, then you add in another tablespoon of lye and you're stirring constantly. You're keeping the hot lye moving so that that hot lye never gets too hot. It's always being stirred on top of the frozen milk that's at the bottom of the cup. So that's kind of the trick to um, adding your lye to milk versus adding it to water. Today was actually the first time that I was able to um, soak with milk and it not turn. It was the first time that I was able to do that. It was the first time that I did it monitoring the temperature because before I didn't have a temperature gun. So I didn't have a way of making sure that my temperature was staying low, but that really did the trick for me. So I would, I would really recommend that if you're going to soap with anything that's temperature sensitive, that you get a nice, a nice laser temperature gun and that you're, you know, that you're able to monitor your temperatures and proceed that way. Do you guys have any questions for me? Any at all? What time do I have to pick up the baby? I have to get her at um, 2.30. I have to leave my house at 2.35 my time, and it's 2.11 now. 2.35 my time. Her school ends at the official class, por class portion ends at 2.40-ish. Um... But then she stays in school for after school care until 530. But sometimes she'll ask me if I can pick her up um, when the official school day ends. I knew we were close to that time. Yes, yes. 
Sometimes she'll ask me to pick her up when the official school day ends, if she wants to go to the park or if she wants to do something extra. And um, a lot of times I'll accommodate that. Like yesterday, I picked her up early and she spent two hours at the park. That's why I couldn't catch her scope well, why my signal was so bad, because we were at the park and not at home, Inez. So sometimes we'll do that. While I'm talking to you guys, I'm going to put my gloves on. I'm going to grab a little mold and I'm going to mold up the last of this soap that I forgot. Be back just a second. I haven't put this soap into the refrigerator yet because I always photograph my wet soap. So that's why it's not in the refrigerator yet. But since we're talking, you know, and I got a few minutes, I need to go ahead and show it, show the soap. Sure. Just a second. Oh. Let me bring the camera back down. And grab the soap. So this is it. It's um, got like a, a brown color, a copper color. It's gonna be a yellowish goldish color inside the soap. And then, yes, milk soap. I soaked it with coconut milk, goat's milk, and buttermilk. Yep. Yep. And in um in designing the top, I forgot that I still had this cup on the side here that just had a little bit of soap left in it. So now we're going to put it here into this little heart mold. Okay. You know, because we don't waste soap around these parts. We don't waste it. And then what I'll do is, um, maybe I'll use, no, we don't waste it now. What I'll do is, um, uh, Maybe I'll use this one little piece here as an experimental embed. Because I have certainly wanted to do embeds, but, um, and I have some melt and pour soap too. I have some clear melt and pour that I bought specifically for the purpose of doing embeds. And I just haven't done it yet. Do you guys have any additional additional questions for me? think there's anything else I can squeeze out of all of my other soap dishes are um, pretty empty let's see no nothing I can get out of there let me grab a paper towel
Is this the first time trying a milk bath? Um, no. Mm -mm. In fact, I didn't even need the milk bath this time. And this was the first time that I didn't need the milk bath. It, um, I didn't have any problems at all keeping my milk cool. No problems at all whatsoever. But this was the first time that I didn't have any problems keeping it cool. Hold on y'all, I'm gonna get a toothpick right quick. toothpicks ran away so no toothpick for me trying to bring some uncolored soap in there there we go All right, I need to stop. All right, folks. Well, I'm going to go ahead and go and get ready to go get my little miniature, my little cami cam. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this soap and making soap with me. I am certainly going to make some more soap because I have more fragrances to test for Naomi. So I hope that you guys join me for that. I am. I'm glad. Very glad that you enjoyed it. I enjoy making soap. I love it. And it's even better when you have company. So you guys have a fantastic day, a fantastic weekend. And if I get the opportunity sometime this weekend to soap, um, if my daughter will let me soap in peace, then I'll come back on this weekend and, um, and make some more soap. Okay? You guys have a fantastic weekend. Let me grab this um, soap. I'll give you one more shot of that. One more shot of that. And hopefully we can even get it cut tomorrow. All right. Have a great, a great weekend. Bye-bye.